Snow Flurry, 1948, the Mobile, to your left, is um, one of a series of about a dozen Mobiles my grandfather made in the late 40s with snow and the movement of snow and the idea of snow and the sensation of snow and the poetry of snow as the subject and other things about snow. That was not an exclusive list. Um, it's a Mobile he kept for himself. He never offered it for sale. There are wonderful pictures of him holding the mobile and installing the mobile. He loved this work. Um, so when we talked about doing this second Weiler Foundation Art Basel booth installation project, um, this idea was suggested that we should maybe have one black, one white, a very pure, no color, severe and pure installation. So we chose a very famous work, Calder's own mobile, and a completely unknown work, the Standing Mobile, which is from 1939, and has never been seen before in any public installation. So that's exciting in itself. But to have a super fabulous, pristine work presented that's unknown with a superstar famous fabulous pristine work is really exciting the black and the white and all of that um, you feel it when you walk into the booth you feel this resonance they're totally unrelated works amazingly separate but yet there's this unification that happens that's really very exciting um, the black sculpture has no title it went into a family collection right about the time it was made and then first presentation So, people often ask about these. This, this, this mobile isn't really about snow. That's not really, that's a distraction. So, you'll see that the movement of the mobile is gesture, of course. Is gesture before abstract expressionism. It's all about gesture. But if you start to study the assembly of the sculpture, you see the white discs. There are different scales, different cadences. But then if you really look at how they're assembled and the sequence of them, at the lower section here, there's one, two, two, one. One, two, two, one. One, two, two, one. One, two, two, one, like that. And then it goes one, two, two, one. One, one, one. One, one. There's a, there are three lower to upper. And if you start to actually follow it, it's almost like conducting a piece of music. Calder's very related to music, very related to um, to rhythm. Thank you, Theodore. Exactly. It's a rhythm. Calder's obsession with jazz, with music, with um, the harmonies of life, life cycles, the spirals, common theme. There are lots of spirals in this work. You don't understand that just by experiencing it. You have to study it for a while. But you can see that there are actually three passages to this composition. The one on the left, which is like a classical, almost a vertebrae of a, a sequence of scale of size. There's a large lower section, as I was describing before, and then the upper passage. So it's like through the three movements of a piece of music coming together to make a resultant whole. And if you stand here and experience it in the scale of time, in its motion, you, some, you understand something much greater than just seeing it from a picture. You have to see it. You have to experience it. So when you, when you look at this sculpture, you see in the bottom of the sculpture at the right is a little kind of finger sticking out there. And it looks like a foot. It's not a foot. The, um, the bottom of the scale is, of, the, of the sculpture is two rails which are curved, and then there's this little finger. And the two curved rails, the sculpture can actually rock. And then it'll rock and it will hit this little finger. So it doesn't just rock like this. It rocks, boom, rocks, boom, rocks, boom, because it hits the finger, which is a stop, not a foot. You understand what I mean, right? Yeah. So um, you can understand the mobile goes like this, and you can understand the mobile goes like this, 
but you don't understand until you actually see it that the mobile goes like this, this kind of thrusting motion because of that stop foot back there. We can't show you because we can't get to it, but I think you can understand. <laughs>